Hi, everybody. I am delighted to be welcomed here by David Hyatt. Um, thank you so much for joining us, David. It's an absolute joy to have you with us. You are the king of purpose-driven brands yourself. <laughs> and you've done some really interesting things in your career. You started at advertising firm Saatchi & Saatchi, and then you went to start the outdoor clothing brand Howie's, and since then here at Denim, and most recently the Do Lectures. And you've really been pioneering doing business differently for quite some time. And you're probably a lot further down the path than some of the amazing purpose-driven businesses that we're working with here at Impact Central. What was it that really took you on this journey? I just figured that if I was going to go and run a business, I quite like it to be one I liked. And, and I didn't want to separate my, like, oh, let's go and do a business um, with those values and come home with a different set of values. And I didn't want to separate them. And I'm going, why can't I take my values to work? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I never really thought it was that kind of you know, radical to just go, hey, you know, shouldn't we do something that matters as opposed to something that doesn't? And, but a lot of people thought it was quite different, but I was only trying to do it in a common sense way, but which wasn't, that common it turned out i mean more so less so now i think more especially young kids now just like they want to go and do something that matters and i think that's great hmm. yeah so back when you started it, it really wasn't that common as you've said and the world of purpose-driven business has really grown rapidly in the past number of years and consumers are demanding more and that's fantastic cynics will also say it's too late the world's on fire there's nothing that can be done about any of the social, systemic, or environmental issues that we're facing. What is it that gives you hope these days? Well, I think if you, I think if we listen to the cynic, um, we won't do anything. Mm. And I mean, the great thing is there's no st statues or monuments for cynics, and but there are monuments and um, yeah, medals for people who actually go and see if they can actually make a difference and. I think, you know, the world without hope, you know, the world without optimism isn't really a world that um, I really want to be a part of. And and I'm, and I'm pleased that people are naive enough to um, want to go and make a difference. And you go, good for you. Go and do it. Um, don't let the cynic win. Um, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, you have grown all your businesses through incredible story telling really thoughtfully and you wanted to do that particularly with um, the denim company that you started why did you want to regenerate that part of wales well uh, there was a, a number of factors and we you know built howies and we'd end up selling it we weren't super we were, like we got a bunch of money but we didn't get a bunch of satisfaction from selling it so we felt like the mission was half complete and and that mm -hmm. was you know, but, you know, that was learning for us. Um, but a number of factors came into play was, um, the, you know, the town, this odd, beautiful town, 4,000 people, you know, closer to Ireland than to, you know, to even to Cardiff, mm -hmm. um, is it had Britain's biggest jeans factory. And, it, and, it, and for 40 years it had it. And, you know, making 35,000 pairs of jeans a week every week for all our 40 years. I mean, it's insane. And then 2002, the factory gates closed and you know, and that clunk of metal um, meant that there was the end of making. Mm. So, and at the time we were running Howie's and, you know, but we didn't know we were about to leave. And, and so a couple of things happened, but there was another thing that had to happen, uh, which hadn't really happened at that point. And that was the rise of the internet. Yeah. Which allowed to for us to bring those three things together, going, well, the town knows how to make jeans. We got a rough idea about how to build a brand. Um, but we need this other thing to come into play called the internet because that allows the economics to work. Yeah. And and suddenly when all those three things come together, you go, Oh, actually, I think we can do something here. And and the, the, that was a really interesting point because, you know, 
it's very rare that those things come into play all at once. Yeah. And you suddenly go, oh, hang on. We can do that. We've got the skill sets here. You know, we've got the brand building you know, skill sets here. And, and we've got this thing called the internet, which allowed you to go and tell your story. Yeah. So going back to your point is really the best brands are, you know, like well-told stories. And an entrepreneur's job is they think they've got to go and build a business is they've got to go and tell their story as well. Yeah. Mm. And, and don't get me wrong. You've got to make a great product. You've got to make a great service. You've got to give a shit about your customers. Mm. But you've got to go and tell your story well. Yeah. And I love your tagline. We make jeans. That's it. Do one thing well. Yeah. What you what really led you to focus on doing one thing well? Can you kind of talk me through or talk us through the highs and lows of that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, a lot of this was really learning from, you know, Howie's where we were doing many, many things. And, and I spent two days in a range meeting and I, I, I shut my eyes and I couldn't remember anything. I was like, going, mm, I don't know if that's the best thing in the world. And, you know, like, the interesting thing is the town knows how to make jeans. And so, and if you think about this, it might sort of kind of give you some clarity is like, you, you could go and start a tennis factory, right? So making tennis rackets. But if I said to you, hey, we shouldn't make badminton rackets, that's a different skill set. Yeah. And and so the, the jeans factory, even though they're, they're masters, they're grandmasters at this thing, they've been making jeans for like a ridiculous amount of time. So they're grandmasters and they have, they're in the elite makers in the world. They couldn't make a chino because it's a different skill set, just like a tennis racket and a badminton racket. They're both racket sports, but to make them is very, very different. And yeah. And it comes back to a thing that I thought about, which is human beings are really good at adding complexity to their lives and yeah. really bad at taking complexity out of their lives. And so true. Yeah. And and businesses even more so. So so you know, we should do this. Why? Why should we do that? Um and for me it's you know, there's enough legs in the world for us to go and get 400 people their jobs back. Mm -hmm. And so if we got really amazing at this one thing and did this one thing better than anybody else in the world, we're probably going to be fine. Yeah, that's cool. And then from um, you at Denim, you've gone on to do a lot more things with your wife, Claire, and you speak so warmly about her. So it must be so rewarding to build and co-create together and yeah. one of those things is the do lectures which is yeah. the annual weekend of inspirational lectures with lots of really inspiring people from around the world and you broadcast it from a cow shed in wales to anyone with an internet connection i mean that's awesome can you tell us a wee bit more about claire and also the do lectures and why did you both start it yeah i mean it's a uh, well it's, it's an interesting thing i mean sort of been married 28 years and desperately trying to make it 29 and so <laughs> I mean, like your partner, uh, you know, a co-founder is, it's really hard to run a business on your own. And, mm -hmm. I, and I know a lot of people who do do it. Um, but I've always kind of tried to do it with a co-founder and I've always done it with Claire. I mean, so the great thing is, you know, like when you're married to someone is there's the ultimate trust bond. And yeah. so the, the hard thing is to try and separate like, you know, home life and business life. And, yeah. and, and like, don't get me wrong, it's frustrating because yeah. I, I mean, I'll have an idea and like, no, I'm not sure. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Um, so it's, it's not like without its tension. Of and, course, of course. And, we are human yeah. after all. And, and so, but, you know, the, the good thing is, and the great thing is, is, you know, there's always trust. Mm. And, and so, and I've learned to shut up as well. Um, just going, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm right. Um, and sometimes you just have to listen and it's fine. And, and, and especially we're having two daughters. Man, when the three of them get together, I mean, I've got, I literally got no chance. I put the bins out. I can, I'm, a, I'm 
I'm trusted enough to do that. <laughs> As part of the Do Lectures, I did your key uh, keyboard CEO masterclass during the height of the pandemic in 2020. And it kind of kept me sane, to be honest. And it was a really brilliant program. Highly recommend to anyone else out there that's thinking about it. And you run it with your colleague, Mike Coulter, oh, yeah. who is a tiny habits coach. And he is absolutely great crack. Loved it. Oh, and yeah. It offered really simple steps to turn your keyboard into a marketing department that punches well above your weight. I've just stolen that copy right off your website. Okay. <laughs> uh, and it's aimed at small businesses and startups doing brave things in the world. And you talk about business being a master at running you, how it wakes you up really early in the morning, consumes all your living thoughts, and how as a founder or CEO, that is the real constant battle. And we need to learn how to win that. Mm. And there's no silver bullet. It's really just consistently showing up which is so hard. And what I was so intrigued by was how you devoted the first entire chunk of the CEO, uh, Keyboard CEO Masterclass to uh, morning and evening routine and how important that is in creativity and focus when you're building a business, and um, particularly the power of tiny habits. Can you tell us uh, why you focus so much on that? Well, I mean, like uh, a business you know, is... 40, 50 different questions thrown at you every day and you have to try and give them the best answer. But the most interesting thing is that you have to be in charge of looking after every else and you're not very good at being in charge of looking after yourself. And, yeah. and so like you have to like look after yourself and because you're probably going to be you know, a bit more stressed than everybody else. You're probably not going to be eating as well as everybody else, you know, because you've so, got so much going on in your head. And, and yet your job is to look after everybody. So therefore, you have to look after yourself first. And so that's why we put priority number one. It's got to, you know, like even the airlines say, like, you know, put the air, you know, oxygen mask on yourself first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in order to try and help everybody else. So, so I learned that, you know, for you, you need to have an hour a day to go and look after yourself. And that can be exercise, it can be meditation, it can be yoga, it can be, you know, swimming. It's like, it doesn't really matter as long as you move something. Yeah. Um, so you arrive at work feeling like, yeah, okay, now what you got? So um, talk, us, talk us through what you do. I know well, this is going to be different for everyone, but I just thought yours was really interesting. Yeah, I mean, I've got, um, you know, I kind of have got like a morning routine that could actually last the entire day. <laughs> but, I, you know, like, you know, like very simply, it's like, you know, I get up 6.40, I will go and do some breathing exercises, Vim Hof, I'll do a um, five-minute Joe Dispenza you know like breathing exercise i'll go and do and um, you know you know try and train my imagination i'll do a seven minute workout then i'll drive off into the down to the you know the sea go and have a quick dip and then come back and have a shower and a black coffee and but that kind of at least sets me up for the day and 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 by the way i don't beat myself up when i can't do it yeah important and, and, and my default is to do it and the exceptions are when I don't do it, and and that's okay. I mean, yeah. and, and Race with and, ourselves. Yeah, and and just kind of like I mean, I, I'm kind of lazy. I mean, and and yet I, I keep doing these things, and but I'm definitely the laziest person I know. But mm -hmm. I kind of uh, I, I have the discipline to do these things, even so. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not like I'm superhuman. I'm definitely not. But it, you know, like, but I feel like. I'm looking after myself. Yeah, I am a huge fan of sea swimming. Discovered that during lockdown, and that oh. is such a brilliant way to clear your head. And oh. I would argue that the Irish Sea is much colder than the sea in Wales. Just FYI, um, um, I I know it is. So <laughs> I know you're right. And um, um, but if you're in a more urban environment like London, uh, what would you suggest maybe to help people to get that brain space, um, head space? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you're running pavements are free. Um, yeah. you know the cold showers are free um, <laughs> you, know, you know you have obviously you know constraints in a city but you can you even can you give yourself 20 minutes a day can you give yourself 30 minutes a day 
just to look after you. The, the great thing is that people don't really understand if you do that pretty much every day, over a year, even if yeah. you, you skip a few and, and you only do it 300 times a, a year, it's such a big thing. I mean, I just went snowboarding and I, I felt, wow. Oh, we've lost you there for a wee second. Oh, do we freeze oh, there? Yeah, we, fro we froze there for a wee second. I think you're back. Yeah. Okay. You just, I, the last thing I heard was I went snowboarding. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, I went snowboarding and, um, and I was surprised, like, about my fitness. And it was those little little bits every day, relentlessly repeated, that gave me that overall fitness. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly went, oh, okay. You know, the problem I think most people think is they have to go and run a marathon. Yeah. And, and you go, well, go and run a mile. Go and run half a mile. Go and run 100 yards. And just build up and... And if you want to change a lot, you have to just change little things, but do it repeatedly. Yeah, and that is so powerful and so hard at the same time. Uh, yeah. You've also written a lot of books or a few books, um, one of which is Do Purpose, Why Brands with a Purpose Do Better and Matter More. And mm. you talk about the most important brands really make you feel something. They do that because they've got something that they want to change in the world. Mm. And as customers, we're then invited into that change. And purpose is what we're really all about at Impact Central, encouraging purpose-driven brands to grow and scale. And we want to support businesses through the lifetime of their business. 90% of startups fail, though. So how do you become a brand that people fall in love with? And you talk about the crazy ones that don't make something but change something as well. What factors do you think really contribute to a brand that people will fall in love with? Well, I think... I'll I think some people make the mistake of um, they go into business just to make money. And then when they're not making money, they sort of quit on it. And um, but if there's something you desperately want to see you know, happen, like a change happen, it's much harder to go and quit on something that's so important to you. So you figure stuff out because every business has its challenges every business has its struggle years every business has its you know, like you know turning points which you know means that you know you're closer to failure than to success mm. but i think if you have something that's so important to you that gives you that grit and that determination then that will mean that you will keep going and and I, I feel like the biggest gift you can give to your idea is not to quit yeah and and that's the way i think purpose and fulfillment really come into play where you just go and there's something there that's so important to you that you just keep going and and you just keep going and and in the end like most most businesses are the fact that you prevail yeah totally totally and, and, and purpose means you have that determination there's something inside you where you just go i've got to keep i've, I've got to relentlessly do this because it's so important to me yeah and, and sorry go ahead and i think what your job is as an entrepreneur is to bring your community along and your job is to make it as important to them as it is to you and that, that comes into the storytelling aspect and because you can't do it on your own mm. and, and nor do you want to do it on your own. Yeah. It's kind of lonely. <laughs> totally, totally, um, totally. And, and I think as well, the um, temptation is for us to want our startups to really demonstrate growth as a set success metric and growth at all costs. And you're under so many different pressures to do that. Yeah. And you've taken a slightly different approach. And I'd love to interrogate that a little bit more. So one thing I've heard you say is, try to be good at something, not big at something. What does that look like? Yeah, I mean, it's, we have got seduced by this, you know, like growth hacking metric of, 
the only things that matter are things that scale. And it's actually not true. And because there was a really great piece of advice um, by you know, Paul Graham at Y Combinator. And he gave the, um, the advice to a couple of startup you know, founders who were struggling and they, they only had 50 customers. And, um, and he said, like, do something that doesn't scale. And they said, what? That's the opposite of the advice that everybody told me. And he said, look, go and meet the 50 customers. Go and find out what their, their issues are. Go and take photographs of um, you know, the, the things that they're trying to sell. Um, go and see if you can help them in some ways. And, and they went and flew to New York and met those 50 customers. And that company was called Airbnb. <laughs> yes. and, and so, so we kind of were desperate to scale things. But like, like Nike grew because one guy in Nike, employee number one, wrote letters to the athletes and asked them how their injury was. Mm. So when they went to the Olympics, which pair of shoes were they going to wear? The ones that wrote to them and asked, you know, like, as a human being, how is the injury or the company that would put 50 quid in their shoe? Yeah. And they chose the, you know, the company that actually wrote letters to them. So, so uh, that's the, the beauty for me is like doing those small little things that actually build community. Yeah. For me, like the, the brands and the businesses of the future are all based on community. Mm -hmm. And that community could be, a, the thing that you want changing in this world right so it's yeah. not just like the community it can, is your purpose sometimes yeah. and, and and very often that way so so i feel like i'm sort of like i'm sort of like happy that that knowledge is in my brain because i'm like going oh I, I kind of believe that i think that's the, the future of business is community and i'm going oh that's a nice thing to know yeah, I, I would totally agree with you. And it's something I think that we've lost, but hopefully partly the pandemic has helped to bring that back as we've rallied yeah, around those so. around us. Yeah. Um, and I think as well, you know, entrepreneurial life is so hard. It is a roller coaster, even in a day, even in an hour of a day. Mm -hmm. And we can do hard things. But what practices have you established yourself over the years that help to ground and center you when the business hits a road bump and things are feeling maybe a bit bleak? Well, I think if you are relying on a result in your business to make you feel like either good or or, or great, um, I think you have to have the balance of being able to, like even on bad days or good days, just being centered. Mm -hmm. um, and when you what, what do you do to stay centered or well, keep you centered? I mean, uh, I mean uh, going in the sea, for someone who doesn't like the cold, mm -hmm. um, and someone who doesn't swim that particularly well. So going in for almost a year and a half, um, most days, not every day, but most days, um, that actually was interesting because I did a hard thing. And it was like every morning, it's like the same. I'm going, man, I can't believe I'm yeah. doing this. It's like, this is so hard. And when I came out, I felt refreshed. I felt, you know, like sort of almost purged of like, you know, the, you know, the things that have been bugging me. And yeah. like, it's really hard to hold on to them when you're actually freezing your butt off. Yeah, and, totally. I totally get it. I do it too. It's exactly the yeah. same. It's like I go in worried, I swim, I come out, I'm fine. Yeah. yeah, and and actually that was been a really interesting thing because then I go, oh, I've got a, a tough day. Well, I've already done the toughest thing today. Mm -hmm. And so doing hard things first thing has been really interesting. Mm, cool. And what one piece of advice would you want to pass on to anyone considering growing a purpose-driven business today? I think this. I think everyone's trying to, you know, like go after the big win. Um, you know, the, you know, and I think, I think big wins are actually quite rare. You know, like the reason you hear about people winning a lottery is so incredibly rare. Mm. Um, but I would pursue this is 
what could you do for 20 minutes each day and sorry um 20 minutes a day and just like relentlessly do something so like i'm doing like blogging 20 minutes a day 10 minutes a day but i'm doing it 300 times a year mm -hmm. and and people go oh it's just 10 minutes a day it's 20 minutes a day good but do what small action could you do relentlessly mm -hmm. Because over time, it's the big win. Absolutely. And the, and the big win is like, is actually 300 small wins. Mm, that is so helpful because I think it's so easy to think that there's a silver bullet and often it is those small things consecutively. Yeah. That's, up. That's great. And, and, and I, I, find, I think that, you know, that, you know, like if you want to, you know, change a little and you will change a lot. Mm. Full of amazing, pithy one-liners. Love it. Finally, my final question. Um, what is keeping you seeing right now? Um, the fact that Liverpool could actually, you know, <laughs> win all four cups. Um, no, I, I think it's... Um, there's a, like... For an entrepreneur, you're in the most incredible biggest personal development program you've ever done and it's mm. called entrepreneurship mm. and you have to go and look after yourself and and you've got to find a way to detach yourself from the things that don't work and the, suddenly the things that do work and your day isn't reliant on just those things yeah and you've got to find some kind of way to go through life and actually you know find some kind of joy each day regardless of Oh, this is you know, my business is going well. Though this thing's going well, but just for you, you know, yourself, just going like it's you've done your best today. Yeah, joy um, hunting just for you. I really like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so so much for joining us. We really appreciate it from your shed in Wales. It's yeah. amazing to have you um, now as part of the Impact Central community, and we look forward to hopefully chatting to you again soon. My pleasure.